first of all, Jaden, uh, we appreciate you joining us. And by the way, uh, nobody knows this. I'm going to allow uh, everybody to have a party here. You have today, by this appearance, this is the 600th different guest on ACCPM. What? So congratulations. Oh. Top 100 on Bruce Feldman's freak list. And you are guest differential number so wait, 600. Wait, Chapel was 599 earlier, and this is 600? This is 600 <laughs> right here. So congratulations. congratulations. And for that, you get I free parking. It. Free parking at Boston <laughs> College for a semester. That's, no, that's, worth, that's worth something. Oh, it's yeah. Worth it. There you go. All right, first of all, uh, it's great having you on the show. Uh, when did you find out that you had made Bruce's list? Uh, yesterday, right after practice. And how did you, were you reading? Did somebody mention it to you? How'd you find out? I was told like right after we uh, finished talking with Coach OB in the huddle, someone came up to me. They were like, you made the, this uh, freak athletes list. And I didn't really know what it was too much. Well, uh, for those who, first of all, if you don't have a subscription, get a subscription, read Bruce. He's great. But here's what, here's what it said. If you don't have one. So, uh, McGowan can bring a big spark to O'Brien's new offense at BC. The 5'8", 180-pounder clocked in a 4'36 this summer and is strong for his size, benching 370 pounds, squatting 500, and power cleaning 275. Now, look, I'm, I'm a journalist. I'm not great at math. But if you weigh 180 and you're benching 370, um, that's double your weight. Uh, that's terrifying to me. What is your, what is your, your work ethic in, in the gym? Where did that come from? How did this sort of develop for you? <clears throat> well, it was a little bit of it was genetics. My my father, he's a pretty he's a really strong guy. But just we're just working here all, all the summer. I've gotten a lot stronger, gotten a lot more powerful. So all of my lifts have grown gone up exponentially. Well, I don't know about you know that freak list. I mean, I've eaten my way to the barbecue joint before, Jaden. And so I mean, I, I you know I didn't make any freak list on that routine. So I, I'm just going to assume being able to you know. Lift it. You got to lift. lift twice you have to your lift weight. your weight to eat to put it in your mouth. That's I'm true. Saying. I'm just All saying. Right. All right. So you say it's genetics. So in a typical, walk me through what a typical day is for you from a workout perspective, class, and everything else. Because you can't cut corners. Whether you were at Vanderbilt, now at Boston College, obviously academics means a ton to you. That means it's a full plate. So walk me through a typical day that you've got to go through. So I would say. Breakfast about um, 7 to 7.45, somewhere in that range. Come to the facility, get a lift, get extra work after the lift, like catching with the other receivers, then going to get some rehab and recovery, and then going to class for a few hours, coming back later in the day, either getting a, lift, getting a little pump in or getting some more catches in, getting some more drills, some routes, and – Got to go home, do some homework, and just reset for the next day. And it's a pretty constant cycle every day. What's the what's like the vibe like when you're going and you're putting up 370 on the bench, or you're 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 squatting 500? Is there, uh, you know, teammates all around you cheering you on? What's the what's the environment like? Oh, it's it's really hyped up in there. That's that kind of what I think that's what makes me a little bit stronger when all the guys are around me. Because we'll once we get to a certain amount of weight all the guys will circle around one one rack and we'll just cheer the other person on. So I like the energy in there. All right, you got great speed. So again, you're talking about all your strength. Where's the balance in going, hey, you know what? I can beef up a little bit more, but I also need, I mean, four, three, six, dude, that is flying. So how, how do you figure out the balance? So it, it, started, it starts off by putting on weight and seeing, seeing what your body can handle. And I've always felt... I've always played like 175, 177 range, but this this spring and this uh, summer, I felt good at 180, and I ran a good 40 at that time. So I was thinking just to just keep that weight and just stay the same instead of beefing up too much. All right, so who's the fastest guy on this team? Oh, I, I think I'm gonna have to take that. <laughs> oh, oh, so we're rear view mirror in the entire squad at 436. <laughs> Is that what you're telling me? I'm, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how about how about your quarterback? Have you raced him before? No, Tommy. Gotta, Tommy, he's fast. You got to let him win, so he'll keep throwing you the ball. See, I would think that, but he said he wants me to win. He said he doesn't want his receivers to be slower than him. So That's hopefully, he lets point. me win. 
That's good. Well, let, let me ask you a little bit about the passing game, because I know we got to see him run a good bit last year. I, I, he has talked a lot about, you know, he is capable of doing a lot more and he wants to showcase a more well-rounded game this year. How have you seen the passing game develop uh, through, throughout the uh, what you guys have been through in camp in the summer? So I, I didn't really play with well, I didn't play with Tommy at all last season, but to see his film then and to see how he operates now, he's a completely different player. He still can run as much as he wants, but. He's developed so much in the passing game. He's able to sit in the pocket, get passes off, make reads. And I can just see the improvement that he's making every day. And his transition from spring to even now is, is tremendous. I know uh, this is a new experience for you. You've also got a new head coach. Uh, but Bill O'Brien, your, your initial thoughts of watching him operate with this new team? Oh, I, I loved it. At first, he was uh, he's a little intimidating because he's a – He's a very strict coach. He wants it done his way, and his way is going to be the best way. That's going to be the way to get us to to postseason play. But he's just he's really on it. He has fun sometimes, but he really gets the job done. And he knows he knows what great teams and great players look like, so he knows how to push us to those standards. Yeah, Jaden, do you get a sense that people were sleeping on Boston College a little bit? One hundred percent. And. <laughs> Us and we and Coach OB, we talk about it a lot, how people doubt us and they talk about how we have Florida State opening night. But we we know the team we are, we know that we're a team that can compete with anyone and we're gonna shock we're gonna shock a lot of the country in um in a few weeks. Yeah, I, I love that Florida State's got one before you guys. They're going over to Dublin to play. They're staying an extra day. Maybe they knock back a few Guinness, a little, <laughs> little Irish whiskey maybe. They kiss the Blarney Stone. They come back. They're still nursing some of that jet lag. Here comes Boston College waiting for them. <laughs> uh, I, think that's, I think this is a trickier game than a lot of people have uh, circled on their schedule. Well, let me ask you, you know, Bill O'Brien's a guy who has been around some big-time programs, Patriots and Alabama, of course, in particular. Uh, a, have you nudged him to get you get to meet Tom Brady or anything? And, and B, what kind, of, what kind of info or sort of professionalism that, from the experience that he has, how has that rubbed off on Boston College this year? Well, I haven't I haven't tried to meet Tom Brady. We did have Julian Edelman come and speak to the team a few a few months ago, but you can just tell that his experience and his the people he's worked with has formed him to be the great coach he is now, and it's making all of us better. He's teaching he's teaching us things that that he taught to prior quarterbacks, receivers, whatever he coached. He's he's uh, he's learned from them, and he's giving us that information too. So it's making us all better at the end of the day. Jane, obviously, uh, you were at Vanderbilt. Nashville is a great city. Uh, Chestnut Hill is beautiful. It's right outside Boston. Uh, compare those two towns. I mean, you're a really bright kid. You got, obviously, a good head on your shoulders. I mean, those are two totally different vibes, though, aren't they? Nashville, Boston? Oh, they they are completely different. I I don't really go into the city much. My friends call me a hermit, so I was, <laughs> I'm not too familiar with Boston so much. But I know that... Nashville's a, a nice city. It gets it's um it gets really hot on like Friday and Saturdays, but uh everyone's going to Broadway at that time. But I don't I'm not really sure what goes on here. Like what are their attractions <laughs> for college students or anything, but I don't really go to see them anyway, so I don't get to really compare too much. So so you're a hermit, huh? So you're just grabbing books and putting your feet up. I mean, it was, you're just That's chilling how out. You can get an education at a place like BC. I mean, we can't get, get in any of those schools. No, I get it. I mean, this is top shelf stuff here. So I mean, I mean, are you are you a true homebody from that perspective? I am a true homebody, and my friends they pick on me about this a lot because they invite me all. They invite me to a ton of places, and I'll be like, I'll I might go. I'll let you know, but. A lot of the time, I just rather stay in the room. We can have some some guys can come over and we can just we can play the game or something. But I'm not really going out too much. All right. Well, let me go down the check. Have you been to a game at Fenway yet? I have not. Oh, you got to do. All right. Have you had a lobster roll yet? I have. I had that on my official visit here. Okay. So you got that. Have you found a, a nice <laughs> Italian place in the North End to go get go get some dinner? I've, I've been to a few places, but I don't have a go-to spot that I would just say off the top of my head. All right. Well, you're getting there. You're, you're, you've got a whole season ahead of you to go <laughs> to go hit some of these things. Dave, the guy's running a 4.36. <laughs> he's benching 3.70. Listen, he's squatting 500. Hey, he, he's got the power got, clean at 275, and you're throwing him on Italian meals and hey, lobster rolls. You've got to keep your calorie count up to be able to bench like that. I'm looking out for him here. Uh, I mean, your uh, fat index is what? Negative 0.7? I mean, come on, man. Jay, you, you got... <laughs> 
I mean, you know, you're not uh, sitting around in a basement with a bunch of idiots like us sitting and waiting for the third pizza to be delivered. I mean, you, you know, your guy's <laughs> in great shape. He's getting a great education. I, I got one last question for you, Jay, and you said your dad's pretty ripped as well. Have do you, do you, have you guys wrestled? Do you arm wrestle? Have you had a chance to challenge the old man yet? See, we've, we've challenged in strength before when I was in high school, like trying to 70 times we could bench press 225. But I won that, but he... For his age, he's putting up he's putting up a good bit of reps. But we usually he challenges me with speed a lot. He tr he wants to race me all the time. But and whenever it gets time to race, he kind of backs out because he knows how. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something. I, I understand the dad thing. Let me tell you, you'd snap his ankles, Jay, and that'd be the end of it. I mean, you, you just it, that'd be an ugly sight. You wouldn't want that on video. I mean, for the, for the sake of the will and everything else down the road. I mean. I mean, you don't want to do that to dear old yeah, dad. You got to keep dad's Yeah, keep spirits. dad on the good side. As, as a dad, let me tell you, our spirits get very low. You got you to you you keep us built up. I don't have much. Hey, listen, uh, stay healthy. Have a great year. We look forward to seeing you guys a bunch. And uh, congratulations on making that top 100 list as well. Thank you. You got Thanks, it. Thanks, Jaden. Best of luck.